What's up everyone and today we're doing a video about orientation. This is probably arguably one of the more important things you're ever going to actually learn about 3D printing. So pay attention. We're going to dive right in. This is not a hesitational kind of video. I'm just going to jump in and kind of go over each piece and how I'm going to orient them and why. We're not actually going to support anything. I'm just going to kind of go over orientation and, and kind of why orientation matters for each part. This is also assuming you're not hollowing these giant pieces that I'm importing right now. This is parts of the Blight Dragon from the Rotting One campaign from Crippled God Foundry. It's a beautiful sculpt. And again, each, each piece is going to have its own fun. So we'll go through each one and I'm going to explain why the orientation of each part is kind of fundamentally important as to why I do it a particular way versus why I don't. And you, of course, can let the slicer determine your orientation, but Lordy knows that is definitely not a recommended approach. It, it recommends some weird orientations. We're going to start with the head because it's cool. It's got this nice flat back, and I'm thinking, hmm, Maybe we could use the back, right? You might be thinking that too. I don't know. You really don't want to do that. I'm going to show you why. So let's say we lay him pretty much flat, right? So he's got these nice... There's all the details are facing straight up. Oh, just So he's going to look super crisp and awesome. There's a problem with that. This entire back area is going to be parallel to the plate. Um, that is going to create a major surface area at a large angle on his back. This is going to create a problem when you're printing. And as we go up through the build, I mean, it's not going to be a terrible amount of material building off immediately, and we're not seeing supports yet. But it's that area underneath him, the block where that key is going to appear first, as well as the entire underneath of his neck, it's going to come out really warped because of how quickly it's going to orientate itself up. Those layers are going to be real thin in the beginning. I don't really think this is going to be the greatest orientation. I mean, look at all that yellow. So we're going to toy around with this orientation a little bit and... Even though we would get decent supporting there, I think we can do better. Now see that there builds up about half of him and we can build up from a corner and he starts to kind of creep up there from one corner to the other. The only thing I don't like is the horns kind of create a bit of a pull, but I think that'd actually be okay. Now this is still a decently large surface area that's going to build out at the same time. That's going to be kind of thin, so even supporting underneath it is going to create sagging, and you're going to get a lot more dimples in that area, which means more sanding and more fixing. So the best way to avoid that is to tilt it make sure it's that part of it is at least at a 45 degree angle or as close as you can get it to some sort of an angle so you have some sort of stepping. This is going to improve the orientational damage or issues that are created by orientation a hundred percent. you see what I end up doing is we actually end up tilting him on one side towards one of the horns at a backward angle. 
And this will actually build him up at an angle in such a way that the side of him is going to kind of creep up on the other side and build him up at an angle. And even though, yes, the other horns are going to start along somewhere along the middle of the other horn kind of being started, you're still going to get a, a much better distribution of surface area on print versus the way if you just oriented flat above the base, um, above the build plate. This will work out a lot better for all the components that you're working with rather than just a few of them. And you can see even the bit of the key just comes up a little bit at a time. A bit of the face just comes up a little bit at a time. Everything is going to creep up a little bit at a time. And that's exactly how you want things to kind of grow on your print. You don't want things to just immediately appear with a large surface area of material because then you're going to either going to have to over support it with a, a lot of supports, which is going to cause sagging underneath the material. And then if, if that's going to just create just more issues for you to fix. That's more sanding. That's more filing. That's more everything. So do yourself a favor and just keep that in mind. Orientation will save you. All right, we'll move on to the tail. And uh, this is just an awkward piece because it's curved. It's got that nice arch there. So no matter where you put this thing, it's going to be an awkward thing to support once you actually start supporting it because you're going to have to put a bunch of supports underneath this if you decide to do it like this. Um, if you decide to lay it flat, you're going to have an, an arch, essentially, that you're just going to have to support the underneath of that. Um, either way, you're looking at some sort of an arched progression, which never works well. The arch creates more pull. The arch actually creates more suction and more force. Once the arch actually starts to get built, it is a pretty strong structure, and it can actually create more more uh, force in itself. Anything arched or arch-shaped arms, things like that, legs, um, are a lot harder than people think to actually print sometimes, especially when the part starts to get big. A tail can also cause the same um, prop kind of problem. So orientating a tail properly is important. I think at the end of the day, the best orientation for something like a tail is going to be like an upwards angle with the slightest amount of arcing material that's going to hang above. I really recommend hollowing parts like this, but if you insist on making them solid, there are better ways to orient them than others. And now we're going to move on to the big piece, the dragon body. And uh, this is a big, 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 big piece. I can't stress them, but this is a very large, solid, non-hollowed out piece um, to work with. And so, again, it has a lot of detail. It has a lot of bits sticking out of it. There's material... That's going to need to be built properly all around it for those key points. So you're going to have to really worry about the flat orientation of any of those surfaces that need square or flat orientations because those are going to create angles as well. So keep that in mind when you're doing your support with stuff like that. You do have to put supports inside those little rectangular areas or square areas, the keys, to make sure that that little section is supported. As you can see, this is just tricky. Plain old big piece. It's going to have a lot of surface area coming up. Regardless of where it starts, I think it's going to be hard to get a small surface area in general. Your probably best bet is going to be to angle this at a very high angle, probably raising a lot of it into the uh, air, making sure that you have, you know, you're sticking uh, some of the detail away from the plate. And... Uh, that's going to probably be your best bet. But then you're going to have to worry about supports being stuck on those little bones in the back and stuff like that too. So there, there are some disadvantages to orientations like that. It's also tall. So if you really don't want to build something uh, taller, you know, that's, that's definitely going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be a little taller. I mean, it's not super tall. It's definitely going to be a taller piece to build overall.
And if you angle it just a little, little bit further, and you get a little bit slight, like a slight more angle, you're going to have an even smaller bit of the surface area to start the print. And that is really what your goal is. You want the smallest areas to start it off with. You want to support those a little bit. And then you kind of want to build onto that material a little bit at a time. And then eventually you're going to have a structure down there that's going to be strong enough to start, start supporting the additional material that's going to be piled on top of it. But the initial part of your print is actually the most important, to be honest. Now let's take a look at something even more interesting. Wings. Now wings are big. Again, we have the arching issues usually because they're arched. And then you have the fact that they are usually large and um, flat in areas as well. So you're talking about big large flat areas and in the case of these they're all highly detailed and so there isn't really a single area of this wing that you really want to stick a lot of heavy supporting on so orientation and being able to use the best type of clean supports is going to be key with this type of a print With wings and any large object like this that have a lot of flat surface area, the best way to do it is you're going to want to start straight at an angle and then put the object on a corner. This is the best way to build it up. Think of it like putting a Dorito on its tip rather than laying it flat on one of its flat sides. That way the printer kind of builds it up like a triangle. It really works well this way. I've tried this with extremely smooth flat surfaces. Resin printers get along with that just fine. And high detailed objects seem to work just as well. And you can mesh this pretty easily and mash a couple pieces on a plate that are pointed at an angle like this. And it'll save you a little bit of space too. Now sure, it is going to make them taller because they are going to be sticking up a little bit higher than they normally would because the orientation is going to be focusing on um, tilt rather than, um, you know, saving space. But honestly, it's actually not that, um, you know, use, it's not going to use that much, much space. To be honest, it's, you can actually put a couple wings, you know, side by side if you have a, a decently sized plate. Um... So it's actually pretty good, pretty good way to do it. And you'll see you start with a decently small amount of surface area on all the points, and then everything is just kind of kind of slowly build itself up from that. And so you really just need to support that bottom really hard um, with a couple good hard supports. And you do have some area there where you can. And then once you do that, I think everything else above is you're going to be able to be a little lighter with your supporting. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, give us a like, sub, comment, and don't forget to hit that bell if you want notifications on videos like this. Thanks. See you all soon.